Hey boys and girls, this is Mr. Crandall, and I'm going to be talking to you today about making inferences. Oh boy. I think I made a mistake. Okay, not that big a deal. I'll just try again. May. Oh, excuse me. Uh, now I've sneezed all over this. It's ruined. An inference is when you use your schema to make a logical guess about something. Schema is what you already know and the way that you think. So right now, make an inference about how I might be feeling. Use what you know and what you think to make a guess. Well, I spelled making wrong, and I seemed to be a little upset. And then I wrote it again, and I sneezed all over my paper, and I wadded it up. So you could infer that I might be feeling upset or frustrated or aggravated. When you make an inference, you use your schema to make a logical guess. Schema means your prior knowledge, what you already know, and how you think. Then you can make a logical guess by looking at what you can read in the words or what you can figure out about a situation. It's kind of like a puzzle. So here I did this puzzle. It's a map of something, but it's... Uh, it's missing a couple of pieces. There's a piece here missing and a piece here. Well, I bet I could still figure out what's on those pieces. Right here it says the United States of America. I bet what was missing is the rest of this banner that would make it say the United States of America. Oh yeah, because it's a map of the United States of America. And I can see right here Indiana, where we live. And I can see over here Virginia, and I can see over here California, and I can see Colorado, and I can see down here Texas, and just to the south of Te mm. This is missing a piece too. Well, what do I already know? What's my prior knowledge? I know that the United States borders Canada to the north, and it borders Mexico. Mexico. Oh, so I bet the rest of this piece said Mexico, and I bet it had the rest of this sombrero. And I see some green here. Mexico, it looks like some of it might be a desert. So I wonder if... Oh, that would probably be a cactus. So I can use my schema, how I think and what I already know, to help me fill in what's missing, to help me find the missing part. So I can use clues. I like riddles. Here's a little riddle I wrote. It says, I eat mice and cough up their bones. I have feathers and fly silently through the night sky. Oh, and speaking of bones, mine are hollow. What am I? What do I know? It sounds like this is an animal. It eats mice and it coughs up their bones has feathers and it can fly so it's some sort of bird a hawk an eagle i fly silently through the night sky has hollow bones oh i bet that would be an owl yeah that makes sense now another inference you could make is what happened while i was writing this my marker is going fine and then it gets really, really light, and then it gets dark. Wow, what could have happened? Oh, you're right. My marker probably started to dry up, so I switched to a new marker. You can use an inference to solve a mystery or solve a riddle. You know, 
fiction books and non-fiction books, you can make inferences in all of those. So I want to read a book to you now called Knuffle Bunny. And you might think, Mr. Crandall, that says Knuffle Bunny. I actually just listened to an interview with Mo Willems, and he said it's Knuffle Bunny. So I'm going to go with the author, Knuffle Bunny, A Cautionary Tale by Mo Willems. Ooh, I wonder what it's going to be cautionary about. Knuffle Bunny. Hmm. Not so long ago, before she could even speak words, Trixie went on an errand with her daddy. Hmm. Wonder which one Trixie is. The text says that she went on an errand with her daddy, so I don't think that's Trixie. And it said that Trixie couldn't even speak words yet, so I think that's Trixie. Trixie must be the little girl. Trixie and her daddy went down the block, through the park, past the school, and into the laundromat. A laundromat is a place you can go to do your laundry. <laughs> Trixie helped her daddy put the laundry into the machine. She even got to put the money into the machine. Then they left. Now on this page I can make an inference that both Trixie and her daddy are pretty happy. I guess that because they both have little smiles on their face. Daddy's walking with his hands in his pockets like he's relaxed. And Trixie looks like she just doesn't have a care in the world. But a block or so later, and look at that, Daddy's whistling, Trixie realized something. Now look at her face. What could you infer that she might be thinking or feeling? That's right. I would infer that she is worried or upset. Trixie turned to her daddy and said, Aggle, flaggle, clabble! That's right, replied her daddy. We're going home. Oh, man, look at Trixie's face here. Mrs. Fawcett, check in the office, please. You could infer that I didn't know that was going to happen. Let's keep going. Aggle, flaggle, clabble! said Trixie again. Look, she's waving her arms. I don't think she's relaxed anymore. I think she might be panicking. Blaggle flabble! Won't be flappy! Snurp! Now, please don't get fussy, said her daddy. Well, she had no choice. Trixie bawled. <laughs> she went back. Boneless. She did everything she could to show how unhappy she was. <laughs> I like that guy's face. I think he might be thinking, oh boy, what's wrong with that kid? By the time they got home, her daddy was unhappy too. As soon as Trixie's mommy opened the door, she asked, Where's Knuffle Bunny? Oh boy, this page doesn't have any words. Look at Daddy's face. And look at Trixie's face. Trixie might be thinking, I tried to tell you, Daddy. And Daddy might be thinking, Oh boy. And then I like what Mo Willems did here. It looks like lightning bolts are coming towards him. I think that means that maybe he could be panicking too. The whole family ran down the block. And they ran 
through the park, pigeon, they zoomed past the school and into the laundromat. Trixie's daddy looked for Knuffle Bunny, and looked, and looked, and looked. But Knuffle Bunny was nowhere to be found. Now, I want you to think, and then I want you to say out loud, what do you think Trixie might be thinking or feeling right there? Yeah, I think she's thinking, but daddy... I want my Nuffle Bunny. Huh, so, so Trixie's daddy decided to look harder. Until... <gasps> Knuffle Bunny! Now look how happy Mommy and Daddy are, and Trixie too. And those were the first words Trixie ever said. So in a fiction book, when you make inferences, you can try to guess what the characters might be thinking or feeling. I don't think Mo Willems ever said in this book, Trixie was upset. But the illustration showed us that, and we could think, well, how would I feel in that situation? Now, I want to show you a little something on a scholastic news that you can use to make an inference too. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit. This is on the back of a scholastic news that's all about... Let me focus. Uh, that was all about animals uh, singing in spring, mostly birds and things. So it says the chart gives facts about three birds that sing in the spring. Look at the chart and then answer the questions below. So we've got the name of the bird. We've got the indigo bunting, the robin, and the red-winged blackbird. We've got the nest and the eggs. The indigo bunting lays three to four eggs. The robin lays three to five eggs, and the red-winged blackbird lays two to four eggs. So for these first few questions, you can use the information that's right there. Which bird lays bright blue eggs? Well, that would be, ah, yes, the robin. We know that because the information is right above it. Which bird has no orange feathers? Ooh, it's a little bit trickier. Let's see. Red-winged blackbird, those look pretty orange. Robin, his whole chest is orange. Indigo bunting, I don't see any orange. So which bird has no orange feathers? Indigo bunting. Callie Mori, come to the office, please. It's a busy day here at Pleasant View Elementary. Number three, speckled means spotted. Which bird has speckled eggs? Hmm. Those don't look very spotted. Those don't either. It's a little hard to see, but these are spotted, so that is the red-winged blackbird. Now this final question, you have to infer. You have to make an inference. It says indigo is a word for a shade of blue. How do you think the indigo bunting got its name? From its eggs, its feathers, or its song? Well, I don't know that its song would be a shade of blue, and its eggs sure aren't blue, that's the robin. Look at its feathers. Those look pretty blue. So how do you think the indigo bunting got its name? Its feathers. I underlined how do you think, because words like think or believe or how do you, oh, let's see, maybe or perhaps, those are all words you use when you're making inferences. So just to review, an inference is where you take the information that you can read in a book or the information that you can observe. You take what you know already, that's your prior knowledge and how you think. Those are things called your schema. And then you figure out the missing things. You make a logical guess. So like I did on this puzzle, it was literally missing pieces of the puzzle and we could infer what those might be. To finish the puzzle, it would say, uh, the rest of America, this would say the rest of Mexico. Well, boys and girls, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson and that you learned a thing or two about inferring. And you know what? Now that you know that word, you are going to see inferring everywhere, and you can make so many inferences. Okay, enjoy.